Good evening, everyone, and welcome to After Dark. Hey, Ted, how are you tonight? Hey, Kara, I'm great. The, we're coming up on the show really soon. I know, I'm so excited. We got a lot going on, and uh, we got a, by the way, we got a, a really special guest today who's a, a good friend of mine and a great friend of the Fix Ops community. And uh, we're going to introduce him soon. But uh, Kara, I love all the promos you've been doing for the uh, the March Magic. Yeah, Ted, I think this has been my favorite theme that we've had so far. I know I've been able to get really creative with all of my promos, whether I'm a referee or a basketball player or a sports commentator. So I'm excited for the event. I think it's going to be a fun one. And it's definitely... Um, a great theme considering the time of year. And in case our audience doesn't know, Kara comes up with all of these creative uh, themes and videos and, you know, she's, you know, doing all that on her own. So she's, uh, you know, it's exploding. So, uh, you know, we appreciate all that you do, Kara. Ted's like, I can't control her. She's crazy on her own. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. All right, so um, we want to thank our sponsor for uh, for tonight's show, After Dark. Yes, we sure do. Thank you so much to BG Products, Partners Beyond Products. We wouldn't be able to do this without them, so a huge shout out to them, and we appreciate them tremendously. Yeah, uh, great, great assistance to the community, to the Fixed Ops community, community by BG Products, and uh, they truly are Partners Beyond Products, Kara. So uh, we're excited. We're actually going to get a tour of the uh, BG facility uh, at the upcoming show on day number one. Uh, Darren wow. Gresseth is going to be here, and he's going to take us through all that. So uh, I'm excited. And uh, if you don't mind, um, remind us a little bit about the, about the show. When is that again? Yes, the next show, it's going to be all virtual and online once again. It's on March 9th, 10th, and 11th. The tickets are all complimentary once again. So you can go over to fixstopsroundtable.com to secure your tickets today. And uh, there's a fellow that we met uh, just recently. He's going to be on the show with us uh, from out in California. His name is Greg Penske. And uh, Greg Penske, of course, the, um, the chairman and uh, CEO of the Penske Motor Group. And, uh, you know, you got to spend some time also, Carol, with him and, uh, you know, great inter interview coming up. Yeah, he was a wonderful guy to me and... How he talked about um, his business and just how tight knit and family oriented um, all of their stores are was amazing. So I can't wait for everybody to see that interview. And there's another interview that you did as well, and it coincides with our charity uh, for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And this time we're going to be talking about their their children's initiative. And you interviewed a very special guest who's going to be here on the show. And uh, do you mind tell us about uh, about him? Yes. Oh, Jude was definitely my most favorite interview I have ever done. Um, and his mom, Barb, was just fantastic. He has an amazing story about how he beat um, his illness and is just ready to take on the world. And to see how supportive his mom was, was just incredible. And, and he said one thing in his interview that uh, his mom was his hero. So I think it's going to be a, a heartfelt story, and I think everybody's going to definitely not want to miss that interview. And we got to meet his mom, and uh, we also got to meet uh, another member of his family, uh, Scrappy. Uh, Scrappy the dog uh, joined the interview, too. <laughs> yes, he was uh, distracting him a little bit. So I was like, just bring him on camera. Come on. We love dogs around here. And that was pretty funny, too. And it looked like a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah. you know, we're looking forward to that on March 9th and 10th and 11th. And uh, and by the way, Kara, for that charity, if folks want to donate, um, what are they, uh, how can they do that? Yes, the donation link is still open, guys. So go over to fixstopsdonate.com. Any amount is welcome. We appreciate any dollar that um, is donated on that link at fixstopsdonate.com. As we are trying to raise $100,000 and we are so close, aren't we, Ted? Oh, and we will, Kara. We are We are going to cross that threshold, and uh, we are very close. In fact, uh, the guest we have coming on now on the show has uh, donated very generously uh, to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society mm -hmm. at our most recent event, and I want to welcome him right now. He's a great friend of the Fix Ops community. He's here in New Jersey. It's Mark Mickens from Lithium Mercedes-Benz of Premis. How you doing, Mark? Hello. Good, afternoon. Hey, good evening. How's everybody doing? Good <laughs> to see you. Thank you for the nice introduction. Yeah. 
I'm hey, so excited uh, to, to hear about uh, everything you've got going on. I got a lot going on. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> You know, you know, Mark really does have a lot going on. And um, and by the way, Mark, that's a tremendous uh, facility that you've got over there at uh, Mercedes-Benz Supremus. Talk oh, to us yeah. a little bit about that, because that's not like the common uh, uh, dealership that we get a chance to see. No, it's a it's a it's a spectacular store. I mean, it's uh, right on Route 17, which is, uh, you know, about 20 minutes from the George Washington Bridge. So give you an idea of where we are. It's a very uh, uh, bustling area. A uh, lot of people, uh, and it's an iconic store. Everybody knows where it is. It, it, it sticks out. It's beautiful. You can see it from everywhere. And uh, I'm really proud to drive in the lot every day and go to work there. It's a beautiful place. That's and, an amazing store. Yeah, it's, it looks it's, it's like beautiful. a mansion of all dealerships. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're very proud of it. I go sometimes I, if I'm walking out in the parking lot, you know, a piece of paper in the parking lot's no good. So, yeah, you know, well. we, we everybody, uh, all, all of our staff is, you know, we're very proud to work there and we keep it, you know, spectacular. It's a, it's, it's really a, a honor to work there, to be honest with you. And when you walk in, you could smell the aroma of the Starbucks that you've got inside the store also. Uh, yeah. And, and, and our baristas uh, recently started cooking breakfast and the, the bacon oh. smell was, uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, it attracts the customers all end up at the, at the cafe. So it's actually pretty fun to watch in the morning, but the, wow. but the, smell, the smell of breakfast goes through the place. It's it, and, and it was closed during the, the, you know, the pandemic, New Jersey had some uh, pretty strict and rightfully so uh, rules on, on indoor anything. And, um, you know, so the cafe was closed for, uh, you know, over a year. So it's just so nice to uh, come in in the morning and, and smell breakfast. It's, it's a, a no, it feels like everything's back to normal, you know. Ted, I don't know what I need to do to get a Starbucks in one of our stores. Well, it's, it, it was, it's, it's an interesting concept. It takes a lot of, <laughs> it takes a lot of time. You, you know, Kara doesn't know this about Paramus, New Jersey, Mark, but uh, Paramus also has a great distinction uh, uh, in the United States because it is the shopping capital, the shopping mall capital of the U.S. Yes, it is, Kara. Um, I might have to come visit then. <laughs> the, the, Garden, the Garden State Plaza is not too far from our store, uh, about, about half a mile, and it's the number one shopping mall that I know volume-wise in the country wow. and it hasn't really slowed down very much even uh you know now it's and the, the volume of traffic that just goes by the front of my building every day oh. it's just it's, and you it's got Param, you got paramus park there as well yes another mall but it's smaller but still not too far from us also so and another one on uh uh route four uh i believe uh on the right hand side there as you're going east towards the GW bridge. Yeah, it's the IKEA center. So yeah, there's just uh, there's just a you know, if you if you need anything, just drive down Route 17 in Paramus and it, it's available for you. You know, so they they take a drive going to the mall just to go pick up some shoes and then they accidentally drive off in a Mercedes. No, we don't think it's an accident. We think <laughs> they, go to, they go to the Gucci store or Louis Vuitton <laughs> and then they stop by and get a Mercedes. Uh. So that's what we hope. Anyway. <laughs> I love or it. Tiffany's. Tiffany's is right down the street from us too. So there you go. So, um, Mark, you and I met uh, maybe 12, 13 years ago. Um, you were the Ford dealer in my town. Uh, in, yeah, yeah, in my in town Missouri. too. So yeah, I we live in the same town. <laughs> yep. And I had a. Um, I owned the, the Ford store in Butler, New Jersey, for seventeen years, and uh, we also had a Nissan franchise, and it was. Uh, it was a great experience. To, it was a very interesting experience to own the biggest, you know, business in your in your hometown where you grew up. So yeah. it was a it was a, it was a lot of fun, and it was it was a you know spectacular, and honor, and we we did a lot of things, and we still do a lot of things for the community. Uh, we started a um, educational foundation for the for the school district. Um, Ted lives in Butler, so he knows that Butler was um, uh, originally a mill town uh, mm -hmm. way back in the day. It was a uh, the, the town was built around the center of a rubber mill in, in the middle of town. And uh, when the rubber mill moved out when I was a kid, you know, it, it, it didn't kill the town because it's a blue collar, hardworking town. And I'm proud to say the town's really on the upswing now. It has been for a while and it's it's really coming back. And, and a bunch of us that went to Butler High School, including my wife, you know, we started at Charitable Foundation in 2015 
And um, we've been able to raise enough money and really proud to say that we built uh, three robotics labs uh, in all three schools. Wow. Wow. And our robotics lab in, a, in, a, in Butler High School, which will finish up uh, being constructed in September of this year, will be the number one robotics lab in the state of New Jersey. So we're really proud of that. And, wow. uh, you know, a lot of a lot of great alumni, a lot of people donated to that. And uh, we took a little little high school that that, you know, maybe was on the brink at one time. And we we raised a lot of private funding and 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 we're in a, you know, uh, we're on the blue ribbon list in New Jersey now for high schools. So it's uh, it's been a really, uh, you know, passion uh, to get the the school system uh, where, where it is. And, and, and we have a great team at the high school great superintendent dan johnson that we work real close with and uh it's been it's been good for the town too because it's it's uh you know boosted real estate values you know having your your town being a blue ribbon high school you know people mm-hmm. look at where, where they want to live based upon the schools and uh so we're really happy about that and that that really was um really came out of owning a dealer a ford dealership you know ford dealers are very kind to their communities it's it's part of really Ford's, you know, you, you know, overall business plan, the Ford Foundation. And I learned a lot about charitable work, uh, being a Ford dealer and, uh, you know, being part of your communities of Ford dealers, uh, a very important uh, pillar for them. And, uh, it, 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 and it worked in Butler, New Jersey. It still does. So a lot of people didn't know this about you, Mark. And uh, when I invited uh, Mark Cara to speak at one of the, Mark spoke at two of the early Fix Ops roundtables, one in New Jersey and one in Las Vegas. Yes. And I didn't realize because I knew now he was at Mercedes Benz and um, he had told us that that was going to become the number one store in the country. Uh, I don't know how long you had been at the store, Mark, but you were, you were there. <clears throat> I would mention it. How long? <laughs> Not long. Not long. Yeah. Okay, but you told me this is going to be the store. And that has happened, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we're 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 getting there. I mean, there's 373 Mercedes Benz dealerships uh, across the country. Okay. Um, and in every measure, when we got there, we were number 373. And I'm not <laughs> kidding. And um, you know, we've my team and 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 everybody associated with us, including Lithia, you know, we we put all the things in place there to to be successful and. Uh, slow climb uh, all the way through. And, and now in our region, uh, there's 129 dealers in our region and we're currently ranked number nine out of 129. And um, in the country, we're, we're, we are in the top uh, 50 percentile uh, of, of every measurement. So we're really, uh, really, really proud of that. And, and more so, I think that um, the biggest accomplishment so far for us has been uh, Lithia, in the, in the ratings of Lithia stores, uh, the top 50 percentile Lithia stores, um, you, you get what's called LPG, which is a Lithia Partners Group Award. And uh, we just re- received the award for being, you know, top 50 store in the country for Lithia also. And um, we were in the red ranking when, when we when we got there. And not so long ago, we, we took the store over in March of 2019. So it'll be three years mm-hmm. next month. And uh I, I have a great team. I, I, I am surrounded by some of the smartest uh, operations people that um, that that I've ever been around, and and I think anywhere in the country. And uh, we sit at this this nice con- Ted's seen my conference room. It's pretty nice, and uh, we sit around that conference table, and uh, everything is, you know, everything is uh, Six Sigma based, and then and, and it's and it's really worked for us. And uh, we have a great team. We've we have a lot of young people, which yeah. is uh, a lot of fun for me because I'm not anymore. And uh, I get to coach them up every day because I'm a coach at heart. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's really good stuff. And, and uh, the vibe in the place, when you walk in there, Ted's been there, the, the vibe's pretty spectacular. Wow. Yeah. It's very professional. And I mean, you walk into the, the service write up area where the advisors are right off the drive, it's indoors and it is, it, Cara, it's a wow. I mean, it's a, mm-hmm. and by the way, I didn't know that you were, a football, a high school football coach until you spoke at that first fix ops round table, Mark, and you had everybody get up on their feet. And I, we all had a chance to see the coach in Mark Mickens that afternoon. Yeah. That's um, we, we do that to open every meeting because, you know, you're, you're working with uh, 15 to 18 year old boys and um, it used to be, boys were always distracted, but they're really distracted now. So in order to get their attention, 
you know, sometimes you have to wake them up a little bit. So we have a couple of techniques to do that, to get everybody's attention. And uh, we have a lot of fun with that also. And uh, like I said, you are the uh, football coach uh, in, uh, in Butler. And, uh, you know, you've done a great job with that team, Mark, because it's, you know, constantly I see it in the news. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud to see, uh, you know, what you're doing with the youth in the community. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Again, you know, I, I work with, uh, you know, our great, um, I'm the associate head coach at the school. And um, I, I work with a, our great head coach, Jason Luciani. And uh, Jason is a coach's son, like myself, and uh, came from a rival town. But but we formed a friendship over the last 25 years that um, has has really made, you know, our program. We're really proud of the program. Um, we've, uh, I've been there, I just finished my 40th, 40th season. Um, at the school last year it was my 40th season wow. coaching wow. and uh, it was my first season coaching with my son which was which was uh, very special for me my, my son was a good football player in his own right didn't play for me uh, I, I, you know we live in West Milford which is a town north of Butler and uh, my son played at West Milford and then went on to uh, Rowan University where he ended up wow. uh, coaching college football for a while and uh, came back and is now a history teacher in our district and uh, joined our football staff last year, and, and uh, uh, we had a good time. And uh, and uh, it's it, never mind watching your son or coach your son play. To coach with him is 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 pretty good. I, I stood off a couple times, and my son does a good job, so I'm I'm really proud of him. But uh, the town itself, it's not hard to get kids to play football in Butler. We have a you know great tradition. Um, I played at Butler, and uh, back in the '70s, of course, but. Uh, and I played for an iconic football coach, uh, Hall of Fame football coach, and uh, he hired me and gave me my first job, and I've been there ever since. Wow. And, uh, you know, never really had any desire to go anywhere else. And um, we've won uh, eight state championships mm -hmm. um, since we've been there. People say that's great, but I've been in the finals 15 times, so we don't talk about the other <laughs> seven. <Yeah. laughs> we, we, we lost a few, too, but um, – but the kids, it's it's a great um, Friday night in Butler is is great because I really think the whole town comes to the game, mm -hmm. and it's it, it's fun and uh, you know I enjoy it. I, I I enjoy getting to practice every day. It's it's real, it's it's not real different than going to work and being in the office, you know, six thirty seven in the morning, and getting the day going. And uh, we we run we run the. Uh, we run the store a lot like we run the team, you know, there's, there's not much, there's not much difference, right? It's competition. And if you, if you compete and you're always competing uh, and trying to be the best at what you do, I mean, nobody wants to be number two at anything. And uh, I tell the people that work for us and work with us that, and I tell my kids that every day, you know, I, I want my kids on, on the football team. Listen, you gotta, you gotta compete everywhere. You gotta compete in the classroom. You gotta compete in the weight room. Uh, and then you got to compete in practice every day, you know, and uh, when your opportunity are, and, and this applies for business, too. And I tell young valet service advisors, parts, kids, whoever yeah. works for me, you have to prepare yourself for the opportunity. You know, you 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 want the folks in that conference room that are making decisions when when something comes up, you want your name to come up. And I I, I tell the kids that work for us that all the time. And you have to be prepared. You have to do your prerequisite training you have to do some things on your own you know you have to give the wow factor when somebody comes into the store so we talk about you but you have to compete yeah you know you have to compete for jobs everywhere you know and uh so we try to instill that you know and 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 you know the, the more you rise you know raise people up to that level the better everything around you becomes so it's not it's not hard to, to fix a dealership and it's not hard to fix a football team if, if you get everybody you know, in, in that mindset, it's about competing and it's about being the best at everything that you can do personally. So it's, it's really personal improvement. It really is. I see what you're doing there, though, Mark. You know, you're training up this football team and you're making them into great young adults and then you're going to hire them on at the dealership. Right. Yeah. They're just, I, listen, what you there's, want them to be. There's no question about that. I, <laughs> I really I really believe I own the business in a community. And Ted knows that Butler is a small, tight knit community. And um, everybody knew me and everybody knew my store. And, and, you know, you have to make your community better before you can make your business better. Or you have to be part of the solution 
you know, not part of the problem. So, you know, I, you know, I do, I mean, I, I, you know, explain to my boys all the time that, you know, you might come work for me someday. You have no idea, you know, but you have to, if you make your community better, you know, people have a tendency to work in and around their community too. So, you know, it's really important. Now you have another love that you haven't told us about yet, but if anyone's been on Facebook, they've seen Mark Mickens and um, Mark, tell us a little bit about uh, some of the things you've been doing here outside of the dealership and outside of Butler. <laughs> um, well, besides getting lucky uh, with this, with, with, you know, this particular picture that you have up, um, uh, I own some thoroughbred racehorses. Uh, I'm involved with a couple, you know, partner groups and, um, you know, uh, have started, uh, about three years ago because racehorses are little when they're born and now they're, you know, starting to get big. So we're actually into the racing side of the game, but, uh, years ago, uh, my uncle, uh, owned racehorses. So it's not, it's not, uh, you know, a new, new passion. It's always been a, a, a bit of a passion and, uh, been around the barn and the track, uh, since I was a kid. Uh, unfortunately my uncle passed away uh, about 25 years ago. And the gap between that and now, um, always wanted to get back into uh, the racing some someday, but you know, with a with a business and kids going to college and things like that, we didn't really have the wherewithal uh, to get involved. But uh, now we do, and uh, my wife and I are are, are involved in uh, uh, two racing syndicate and partnerships. And uh, wow. right now, uh, we have. Uh, uh, five horses that that um, that are either at some form of training or getting ready to be at the top of uh, some level. So we, you know, we have a, you know, a, a really a great colt uh, that we're that we're hopeful for, and uh, a couple fillies that are training down in Florida, and um, we're, we're hopeful and uh, and it's fun. And uh, there's a lot of charity work uh, that we do. We belong to a group called the Empire Racing Club. And uh, the Empire Racing Club, uh, New York, it's the New York Horsemen's Association. And we do a lot of charity work for retired horses and um, also retired jockeys. So we're, we're pretty proud of the work that we're doing, doing there. And that's going to really kick up this year. Last year it was a little quiet because of the pandemic. But we have uh, a bunch of events that we're going to be doing this year at Belmont uh, Racetrack in Saratoga Springs. So wow. looking wow. forward to that. And hopefully, uh, hopefully one of our horses will be involved in winning a race or two so we hope for that and i have followed you where you are in some very big races i recall speaking to you you were getting on an airplane you were flying out to the west coast and you were involved also with a lot of uh you know a lot of celebrities and a lot of uh a lot of fam famous folks and uh yeah in well, that's been the interesting part i mean this picture is uh, that's tyler gaffleone he's well one of the leading jockeys uh in north america and a spectacular young man uh not uh, you know he can ride my horse whenever we can get in touch with his agent. But, uh, um, you know, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a thrill. Um, there's a lot of uh, great people involved in this, uh, in the sport and the industry. I always like to give a shout out to the people at the, the backstretch. This is the fancy stuff that you see on race day. Or if you watch the Kentucky Derby, there's a whole ecosystem of people that care for these great athletes uh, every day of the week from 4.30 in the morning till you know, eight o'clock at night, you know, the, the grooms and the hot walkers and the trainers and the assistant trainers and the veterinarians and the assistant veterinarians all on the back stretch where I like to go, uh, you know, to see the horses. And those are great people that care for the horses to, you know, uh, and they're, they're well cared for it. I want, I want, I really want to, uh, you know, make that known. Uh, these horses are, are well cared for and, and, you know, we, and we love them. They're intelligent, uh, beings that, that, that know who you are and and know what they're about to do. I think the number one question I get is they, did they know they're about to race? And the answer is 100% they know they're about to race. So it, it's, it's fun to watch them on race day. And it's also fun to watch them just be in the barn and uh, feed them a carrot and pet them. And, you know, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And it's also, you know, it's a, it's a business and it's a passion, but uh, we don't let the, the, the business overflow the fun. Uh, we're, we're doing it for the right reasons. I, a lot of charity work and a, and a lot of good times going to the track. And, you know, it's, it's nice to bring friends and family in, in, into some of these big races. And, and we have, we have a really good time uh, to, to what Ted was talking about. We'd, uh, we'd uh, gotten lucky 
and and we had been involved with a uh, uh, I'm involved with a a great company called My Racehorse, which is the really the gateway for um, people that want to get into horse racing ownership to get into. It's it's relatively inexpensive, and um, and and it's a great way of learning. They they have a lot of um, actual you know how tos about racehorse owning and and it's um it's a great it's a great group of people and uh <clears throat> i got involved with them and and it subsequently got involved with a uh a racing lease on a world class racehorse named got stormy oh, and yeah. uh, not really knowing uh what i got involved with uh then went on this like spectacular 18 month whirlwind that uh got stormy won a grade one race uh the four star dave up at Saratoga last mm -hmm. August, which mm -hmm. was a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup, which is the Super Bowl of horse racing. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I got to go to Del Mar Race Racetrack and um, and and really as an owner uh, get all the the perks and and accessibility that a Breeders' Cup horse owner gets, which was wow. uh, kind of just unbelievable because we're really not at that level. Uh, maybe someday, but um, we got that level. Uh, treatment and uh yeah we were really really um proud of got stormy ran fourth in the race and then uh she retired and uh, uh went back to spendthrift farm and uh is going to be a brood mare uh shortly here um she's going to be uh uh you know bred with a horse called uh your Yaw which is also a, a world-class horse and we're hoping to hopefully someday uh be involved with a group that maybe bids on that first full so because uh, God Stormy will always be a very uh, special horse for my wife and I. It's really what got us started. And, and she was a great mare and uh, a friendly horse. And, uh, you know, we got to say goodbye to her uh, in, in, a, in a spectacular fashion. And uh, I hope to see her again. But she set us up uh, basically in the business to go forward. So we're, we're, we're really grateful to, to her. And I, I got I got uh, I got to uh, ask you. So, at what age is it? Three years old when they're ready to to run? Is it? Is that the age three um, or four? Well, really, you know, horse racing is a business, and 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 you know, it's really it's really when they're ready. Um, there is a there is a a robust two year old um, circuit in in the country, um, and and some horses are 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 ready to run when they're two, and some aren't, and some horses do run when they're two and three, and really don't don't take to it or know they're really a racehorse and and they bloom later in life you know and uh you know what you see on what you see you know the kentucky derbies in in in, in may and that's the the race that everybody identifies with uh across the country and then the preakness and the belmont but uh oh, yeah. if the horses that are in those races um you know there was nineteen thousand foals uh born in 2019 so the wow. 20 horses in the Kentucky Derby, you know, uh, are the top 20. So even the horse that's a hundred to one is, <laughs> you know, is a, is, is a top horse of, of, of their class. So, wow. um, you know, it's, it's, that's the, that's the spectacular part of, of horse racing, the Kentucky Derby. And everybody knows that, but it's, there's so much to it that, uh, I didn't even know. And I've kind of been around the sport my whole life and, uh, but I'm learning and, uh, you know, it's fun to learn. It's, I think it's going to be something that, uh, when I retire, that it'll, it'll be something that I'll, I'll probably do full time. I hope. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great. And, you know, um, uh, a fixed ops regular Sarah Valentine is, is, is a big horse, uh, owner and, uh, Sarah, equine, yeah. equine lover like myself. And we've connected a little bit on that. So it's, it's been fun. That's right. And, uh, I've seen the pictures of her and her children. You know, they're out there. It looks like every week, and they're practicing, and they're, uh, um, you know, I tell you, I'm very, very proud of what Sarah's doing. So you try to go every week. You know, my everybody's in Florida, but me right now. So <laughs> I'll be down in Florida on uh, <clears throat> March 19th. Our three-year-old Colt uh, Provocateur is running in a, a big stakes race at Gulfstream, and so we're pretty excited about that. He's uh, he's done really well for us already. I mean. Um, when I first joined, the, the 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 people that I got involved with said, you know, are you joining for for fun or for 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 profit? And, and I said for fun. And they said good because you're not going to make a profit. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, they, they've um, they, all the right reasons. You know, any horse has about a one percent chance of ever winning a race. One percent. 
One and uh, fortunately for us, we had two winners last year and got started. Wow. Provocateur won a big rate, race late in last year at Tampa Bay. And uh, so we've had two in a year, so we feel fortunate. And uh, might not ever happen again, but it happened right. twice, so we're pretty happy about that. Well, Mark, we got to have you back. Uh, this is long overdue, by the way. We got to have you back on the show on the Fixed Ops Roundtable event as well. And um, you know, again, you're a best practice winner, and you know we could see why. Kara, I'm sure if Eric's watching, he's probably thinking, how how can I recruit Mark to come down to Texas right now, right? Right, exactly. And yeah. I'm I'm just saying, bring your horses. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will. Um, I'll I'll send you guys some pictures. I'll I'll be down in in, in Florida in March and. Uh, I'm hoping to see just, just just more than one. Uh, it's difficult to get around, you know. The, 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 the barns are busy, and you know you have to really be careful. And 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 uh, so I try to get around to as much much as I can. But uh, I'm I I'm impressed. Greg Penske's coming on, you know. I I, yeah. I don't know if all Lithia guys are allowed to mention Penske, but that's, that's, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. You can tell yeah, him we're, we're chasing him. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's got a great story. And re remind us, Tara, when is that event coming up again? It's on March 9th, 10th, and 11th. So you can get your complimentary tickets at fixedopsroundtable.com. It's going to be all virtual online. So make sure you're watching come March 9th because we've got amazing speakers and it's going to be the best event yet. Yeah, I think so. In fact, there's, there's no question, Kara. This is going to be the biggest event we've ever had. Um, the lineup is just amazing and busting at the seams and uh, uh, again, still some big announcements to come in the coming days. Uh, Mark Mickens, I want to thank you so much on behalf of the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Thank, thank you. I, I just want to, I know my wife is going to watch this with me and I just wanted to, if I can, my, my wife, we will we'll be married uh, 38 years in, in May and uh, she's been my partner through all the stuff and lets me do all the, the crazy horse race coaching football <laughs> stuff and is a, is a big supporter of mine and a uh, love of my life. And uh, so thanks for all, all you let me do, honey. Aww. Love it. Love it. Hey, uh, thank you so much, Mark. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ted. I'll see you guys next Monday at 8 p.m. Thank you guys for joining us with Mark. Can't wait for next Monday.